Hi right, guys. It is just a hot, sticky, miserable, sweat soaked day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization and the, uh, in the boom town of Austin, Texas here on Thursday. That would be May 4th, 2022. Feeling more like August 4th, but uh, compared to what's coming to Texas in the next four days, uh, I guess I can't complain. I'm going to spend four days experiencing uh, an early May heat stroke weather to remind me uh, why I uh, spend my summers in New York. We have goats running around. Okay. We have a herd of goats running around uh, the yard in Austin, Texas today. Uh, <laughs> never, never know. So anyway, guys, uh, it is Cinco de Mayo, and I have to figure out uh, the best uh, margarita bars to go head out to in South Austin, Texas. But before I do, let's just go over. We're going to go over to the mainstream media today for today's Chronicle of the Collapse here in Yahoo News. Good old Time Magazine. You know, I, there's been a, a lot recently in the in the Doomosphere, my colleagues in the Doomosphere, you know, talking trash about the mainstream media. Uh, how they're just little pawns of, you know, the global corporatocracy and you can't trust anything that they uh, just, uh, just are mouthpieces for big oil and all the rest of the usual suspects. And so here I am, I, I am one of the few, maybe it's because I used to be a journalist kind of in the borderline between the alternative and the mainstream media, but I'm going to defend the mainstream media Time Magazine and anybody who has a problem with the mainstream media, let me know what your problem is with this story right here by some fellow named Alejandro de la Garza. I have no idea who they, he is, but he is going to give us a lesson in, on several fronts. <clears throat> Take it away, Alejandro, in Time Magazine. Big Oil sold the world on a plastics recycling myth. It may be too late to undo the damage. And we're going to start out right here in the great state of Texas. <clears throat> a few weeks ago, my friend Brett Pocastein showed me a photograph of his girlfriend, Angie, taken on Padre Island National Seashore on the Texas Gulf Coast. They had driven 200 miles from Houston to visit this 60-mile stretch of undeveloped barrier island, which reaches south from Corpus Christi towards the Mexican border. But when they stopped and got out of their car, they found the shoreline littered with plastic, old diapers, water bottles, and plastic detergent jugs. Bathers had set up their blankets and umbrellas amid the trash, and children made sandcastles between pieces of plastic junk. Brett and Angie got back in the car and drove close to 30 miles trying to find a stretch of unpolluted beach and finally gave up. Brett took a photograph, Angie smiling beneath a gray sky, bits of plastic garbage mixed in the sand at her feet. If you are not aware of this, the world is in the midst of a plastic waste crisis. Every year, the world produces about 400 million tons of plastic. In the U.S., barely 6% of that waste was recycled last year, down from around 9% in 2018 as nations like China stop 
taking U.S. plastic, the vast majority of the plastic waste ends up in landfills, in the oceans, or spread across the land, an endless tide of chemically indestructible junk polluting our coastlines, infiltrating ecosystems, and when it breaks down into microscopic fragments entering our bodies with unknown health repercussions. <clears throat> For years, the fossil fuel industry has been turning oil and natural gas into plastics in massive, heavily emitting cracker plants. In anticipation of shrinking fossil fuel demand, it, meaning the plastics industry, is currently investing $400 billion to expand their plastic production, including a $10 billion ExxonMobil Saudi Basic Industries Corporation facility being built just a few dozen miles from Padre Island across Corpus Christi Bay. The result, according to one study, 1.3 billion, 1.3 billion metric tons more plastic dumped into our environment by 2040. For years, the folks selling that plastic have avoided blame for the ecological mess their products have caused mainly by promoting a largely false set of promises about our ability to recycle plastics, along with a narrative advertised in countless anti-litter commercials that dealing with plastic waste was the responsibility of consumers, not producers. But that may be changing. Last week, California's Attorney General opened an investigation into fossil fuel and petrochemicals companies, accusing them of perpetuating a decades-long disinformation campaign. Maybe that is the, uh, is that part of the disinformation governance board? Or governance disinformation. I don't know if there's a, a connection there. <coughs> Such an inquiry has never been attempted before, and it will likely add to mounting pressure the industry has been experiencing recently. The plastics, the plastics industry has a, quote, target on its back Tony Radozuski, president of the Plastics Industry Association, told attendees at an event last summer, quote, some people are trying to put us out of business, close quote. Around the world, 71% of people think single-use plastic products should be banned, according to a 2019 survey. Many African nations have outlawed plastic bags in recent years, while the EU banned many single-use plastic items last summer. Last month, Los Angeles County blocked restaurants from selling food in plastic containers that cannot be composted or recycled. I am fascinated by the question of what causes a person, city, or country to change their view towards plastics given how difficult it can be to accept that there is something monstrously wrong with the world you take for granted. Evidence accumulates and we relegate it to that dusty section of our minds reserved for the terrible things about the world that are too overwhelming or omnipresent to really think about. 
Then some new bit of information, a thought, a feeling, hits from a different angle, cracks the clam, oh, I'm sorry, cracks the dam, and suddenly the sheer awfulness of the whole situation of a world clogged in every crevice with plastic junk spills out into the open. <clears throat> For some, that moment came back in 2015 when a video of researchers yanking a plastic straw out of a sea turtle's nose went viral. For others, it was reading about the plastic industry's deception campaign around recycling. For my editor, Kyla Mandel, new research on how microplastics are turning up in human blood redoubled anxiety about what plastics were doing to us. For my friend Brett, it was the trip to Padre Island that did it. Upon returning, he purged all the disposable plastic that he could from his life. He ordered sheets of dissolvable laundry detergent and bought toilet paper packaged in a cardboard box. Quote, hope you enjoy that meal, he would say, seeing a co-worker sit down with a pile of plastic containers, because the planet is going to be enjoying it forever, close quote. Bread is right on that point. The plastic we put into the world will be with us for hundreds of years, floating up on shores and circulating through our bodies and those of our children and our children's children. There is hope of stemming the flow of new plastic pollution if we manage to hold off corporate plans to keep expanding plastic production until we choke on it. But the tragedy of an irrevocably changed world is already here. As my friend Brett said, quote, there was more plastic on that beach than anyone could ever pick up. And even if you did, there is infinitely more out in the ocean and more would just wash up." Close quote. It was that gift for what we have lost that woke me up. Brett has always loved the world's wild places and he spoke of Padre Island with a tone of indignation, but there was pain beneath the anger a hint of something like heartbreak. And when I heard it, something in me broke too. And uh, let's see. If you want to know how many people on a planet of 8 billion people have commented on that article, if your guess was zero, zero people commenting on that article, give yourself a gold star as, of course, the number one article, the number one story on planet Earth today, according to Yahoo News, is, I guess, some uh, horny female jail guard helped spring some convicted murderer and they're on the lam. It's Gabby Petito all over again. The number one story on the mainstream media today with 107 comments and this story near the bottom of the Rolodex getting zero comments, which says as much as anything, and you wonder why the mainstream media, uh, you know, you're an editor at Yahoo News. You know damn well 
that the Gabby Petito story of the day is going to be a hell of a lot more important to 99.9% .9 of the people on this planet than the collapse of a planet, which is, what did he say, relegated to the dusty corners of our mind where we do not want to think about things such as the collapse of a planet. Anyway, I have got to wrap up today's chronicle of the collapse and see if I can uh, get a margarita in Austin, Texas uh, for Cinco de Mayo actually served me in a glass instead of a single-use plastic cup, which is where I, uh, when I got a margarita last night uh, in South Austin, Texas at Guero's Taco Bar, they were serving, good God, how many, how many thousands and thousands of single-use plastic cups does one taco bar in politically and environmentally correct South Austin serve every day? Cinco de Mayo are 2,000 single-use plastic cups, each with a single-use plastic straw in it. How many thousands of those will be inflicted on the planet in one day today to celebrate Cinco de Mayo. Whatever that means, I highly suggest you get out there and celebrate Cinco de Mayo with a margarita and a real glass while you still can. Bye guys. What are those crazy goats doing out there, little dog? Who's that? Where are those goats?